The camera loves movement. Tilt, pan, track, zoom. Learn the names and use them correctly. A tilt is movement up or down. Always take both, it gives you options. And hold the shot for at least five seconds at the start and the end, so then you have three shots for the price of one. Two statics and a move. If you see here, the tripod remains still and the camera pivots up and then pivots down. It's like when we nod our head. A pan goes from side to side, never up or down. Try to motivate a pan if you can. There should be three shots, a static at the beginning, the move in the middle, and the static at the end. The tripod doesn't move. The camera pivots from side to side. Try to make what you see during the pan as interesting as possible, or if not, as short as possible. With a track, the camera physically moves. Here, it's towards the subject. Sometimes it's with the subject. You can see more of the background at the end of the shot, so it's much more dynamic than a zoom. If you can't afford the money or time for laying down tracks, you can do it handheld or improvise. With a zoom, the picture tends to get squeezed when zooming in, but opens up when zooming out. But it's quite unnatural because it's the only move that the human eye can't really do. As you see, the camera doesn't move at all. It's the lens that moves internally. A zoom can be used, but should be used sparingly. Shooting a sequence. Always brief your cameraman. Make sure he knows what you want from a sequence. Start with a clear frame and end with a clear frame. Overlap your actions in the different shot sizes, which gives you options for editing. Watch for continuity. Change shot size, and as you do, change the angle. Make sure you get close-ups and cutaways. You can never have enough. So basically, the sequence as a whole is that Guy walks up to the phone, picks up the phone, dials a number. Um, it's going to be direct inquiries. He then writes down the number, puts down the phone, and leaves. And what I'd quite like to get is a wide shot, the first thing to be a wide shot, Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, of him walking in, so it starts with a clear frame, he walks in. And I want the first shot to be a kind of three-quarter profile because I'm then going to do a mid-shot of the action kind of as a profile because I want my close-ups to be kind of from here so that I can do a tilt and up. Mm -hmm. And also, I'd quite like to use a mirror. Mm -hmm. So if we can do a pan, that would be brilliant. And obviously, over the shoulder for all the the buttons yeah, in yeah. up and down and um, a slightly different close-up for the final down and he leaves frame. There's yeah? An, there's an out shot on the, yeah, okay. That's yeah? Fine. yeah? So, stand by. And speed. And action. Find your own language for the stages. Stand by, he'll tell you he's running or at speed and you cue the action. London. Kaminsky, D, for David, 55 Mercer Road, no thanks. Notice he was out of the frame at the beginning, he walked into the shot. You should run the whole action in long shot, which acts as a master shot. If nothing else, you have the whole thing in one go. Notice at the end, he leaves frame, and then wait five seconds to say cut. Cut. Here, the cameraman had to move away from the camera so that his reflection wasn't in the mirror. Be aware of camera reflections. Yeah, this London. is the mid shot. Notice the different Kaminsky. angle, now in profile, from the long shot. Again, he starts out of frame, but you should be watching for continuity with what hand he picks up the phone, he writes, etc. And the line is between him and the phone. We're on the same side as we were. He repeats the whole action so we could edit at any point. Again, at the end, he leaves frame. Starting with a clear frame, the action is repeated. The angle has changed to the front, so it won't jump. Yes. Look how much the camera has moved. Close-ups of faces are great for speeding up time in a sequence. Who knows what the hands are doing? 
The tilt. Remember, the camera loves movement. It makes sequences look more interesting. You don't have to use it, but it gives you options. Again, repeat yes, the action. A pan. Again, try to have some camera movement. Commence Reflections are always something to look David. for to spice things up. <clears throat> okay, we just step back a little bit, and then, and then if you could, when I ask you, come in, pick. Just I just need to frame the shot. Mm -hmm. So if we just um, pick the phone up now. Take your hand away, and then just dial a couple of numbers. Oh. Big close-ups are really important, as is the sound attached to it. Notice which shoulder he's going over to avoid crossing the line. And I'll just do another shot of the phone going down. For a yeah, second. Different angle. Just hang up. Put the phone down, please, for a second. Let me just change the focus slightly. And pick the phone up. Actions look faster in close up than in wide shot to so slow please. your action down. So when it happens, Ben, I want your hand out. Mm -hmm. In fact, can you put the pen down? Okay, hand out. Okay, and then pick up the pen, write the number, put the pen down, and that'll be it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, are you at speed? And speed. And action. With the variety of shots you have, you could edit this in so many different ways and you could cut it as long or as short as you like. With different shot David. sizes, a variety of angles, good continuity, never crossing Mercer the line. Raid. And notice how you should cut on action, but it's only by repeating action in different sizes that you enable the editor to do this. So remember, by shooting different shot sizes, and in particular close-ups, you can speed up or even slow down time. Close-ups, close-ups. You could never have too many. Shoot a close-up of everything. Break every action up into a wide shot, a mid shot, and a close-up. Be imaginative. Look for something that is going to make a sequence interesting. Here you have an example of a sequence, tea making, which so many people have had to shoot. If you only shoot in wide shot, you certainly get a sense of geography, where this person lives, which tells you something about them. But look how long it takes. Wide shots mean actions have to run in real time. With a sequence like this, you should be looking at every action and thinking, what is the close-up here? Is there a cutaway from the action? You should be thinking of getting at least two different angles of close-up for his face and looking for options for interesting shots. Are there any reflections? Where can I put the camera to make it more interesting? This sequence takes well over a minute and isn't very interesting. You need wide shots, but it is absolutely essential to get as many close-ups as possible. This has been cut using lots of close-ups, and with so many options, you could cut the sequence to whatever length you want. And the result is much more interesting and much more dynamic. You can never have too many close-ups.